Listen to part of a university lecture by a professor of art history. You know, one of the most significant movements in modern architecture and design took place in Germany in the 1920s and 30s. It was called the Bauhaus movement. Bauhaus just means building school and the Bauhaus was an art school started in 1919. The Bauhaus program was the first model for our contemporary art schools as we know them today. Its program was the first attempt to integrate the artist with the craftsman and its philosophy was heavily influenced by William Morris, the great 19th century English designer. Morris's theory was that form should follow function, that art should serve the needs of society, that art has a social function. Of course, modernism in art had already appeared some time before this. The great expressionists like Vincent van Gogh, Edward Munch, Marc Chagall had been working since the late 19th century. But now, the horrors of World War I, along with the poverty and inflation that followed it, caused the German art community to turn to what they called the new objectivity. The Bauhaus design innovations reflected this with imaginative but very practical simplified forms, with the emphasis on functionality and efficiency, and with the idea that mass production and artistic creativeness could work together. They were the practical planners for the modern lifestyle. The post-war government of the German Weimar Republic permitted a surge and outpouring of radical experimentation in all the arts, but at the same time, Germany was trying hard to remain economically competitive with Britain and the United States, even though it was suffering financial privation and even though it lacked natural resources. The Bauhaus movement recognised these difficulties and offered solutions to them, and in this way it contributed to both social and artistic change. Bauhaus designs were pure and simple. The buildings, the interiors and the furniture that the school created could all be built cheaply and efficiently. They emphasised straight edges and slim, smooth shapes, and a modern, hygienic freshness. In particular, the Bauhaus designers discovered steel. Steel furniture is cheaper, lighter, cleaner, and less bulky than the traditional stuffed, upholstered furniture, and steel has what they called the magic of precision. It can be used in precise, definitive forms and measurements. In spite of this emphasis on practical functionality, many famous, creative designs emerge from the Bauhaus. If we look only at their chairs, four very original designs were created at the Bauhaus. The Vasily chair, Le Corbusier lounge chair number four, the cantilever chair, and the Barcelona chair, and all four chair designs are very popular and are found everywhere today. The Vasily chair was designed by a Hungarian designer, Marcel Breuer, who was the director of the Bauhaus carpentry shop. It's made of a simple, cubicle, tubular steel frame with canvas straps for the seat and back, and it has been in continuous mass production since the early 1950s. Brewer said he got the idea for the Vasily chair's design from the handlebars of his bicycle. Le Corbusier's LC4 lounge chair is probably the most popular and the most comfortable lounge chair ever built. Le Corbusier's idea was that a chair is a machine for sitting on, and this chair, which is greatly curved to fit all the curves of the body, is still a popular design in spas and living rooms. The cantilever chair was designed by Brewer and Mart Stam, a Dutch designer. It has no rear legs, but is supported by the tensile strength of the S-curve of its steel tubing frame. This little chair is still an extremely common design for kitchens and restaurants. And Mies van der Rohe's Barcelona chair uses leather or cloth straps to suspend its seat cushion on a folding X-shaped tubular steel frame. His design became a symbol of the elegance of avant-garde living, but it's so simple that it's now seen in the luggage racks in most every hotel room in the world. The Bauhaus movement is not really important for its chairs though. It's important because it came along at the right time in history to popularize many key modern concepts of design. Many outstanding artists of that period lectured at the school. Le Corbusier, Walter Gropius, Mies van der Rohe, Vasily Kandinsky, Paul Klee, Laszlo Moholy Negai, Piet Mondrain. These great artists and their students were to lead contemporary design into daily life. Unfortunately, the rise of Adolf Hitler cut short the Bauhaus exciting experiments. 
It was closed down by the Nazis only after 14 years of existence in 1933. Hitler accused it of being a front for Jews, communists and un-German social liberals. However, the Bauhaus lecturers and students fled Nazi Germany to the US, Russia, Israel and Western Europe. They continued to teach far and wide and, in this way, their ideas on contemporary architecture and design spread even faster throughout the world.